What you see below is perhaps not Silicon Valley, but it used to be home to 200 years of vast mining wealth. That Iron Valley is now gone. Today, Ebervale is one of the most impoverished areas in Europe, where income per head is just half the national average, and where more than a third of people live on welfare. This town tells the story not just of Wales, but of Britain and its relative economic decline. Households are now almost 10% poorer than neighbouring France. Low-income families are 27% poorer. Nine million young people have never seen a real pay rise. Here, inequality is more acute than other countries. Investment is vanishing, job security is vanishing, and all the while, taxes are going up. So how do we thaw the frozen growth of the British economy? Back in London, the great and the good of industry and banking gathered at a summit devoted to answering that very question. Keir Starmer said the economic picture today was worse than even after the financial crisis. So we are in a hole. No doubt about it. And what this feels like is a, a clouding over, a, a loss of the future. And he declared Labour was now growth-obsessed with a radical plan focused on wealth creation and private enterprise. And no wonder his plan didn't seem to include any new money. And anyone who expects an incoming Labour government to quickly turn on the spending taps is going to be disappointed. The Labour leader also attracted criticism by praising Margaret Thatcher and her ability to ignite British entrepreneurialism in the Sunday papers, something that made for uncomfortable reading in many Labour quarters. Well, we're not into that for quite a long time. She's not forgotten in Wales and the harm that she did to so many communities lives on in the lives of people who live in those places even to today. Uh, and of course she represents a fork in the road, doesn't she? You know, she represents a period in which we lost confidence in the state to be able to do the good things that only the state can do in people's lives and we set off instead on a false trail believing the markets left to themselves would solve all our problems. Is Britain in trouble? Well yes, Britain is in trouble. We've been living through a phase of relative decline, what we call economic stagnation now. If you combine low growth that we've had for the last 15 years with the high inequality we've had for 40 years, then I'm afraid, yeah, it is a toxic combination for low and middle income households in particular. Like you say, because if you don't invest in your future, you just try and live off your past, then you're not going to see a growing economy, and you won't close some of these big regional gaps that we know we need to do. The Resolution Foundation also highlights how deep British inequality splits the haves and the have-nots. In Blenheim Gwent, where Abervale sits, income per head, the best measure for standard of living, is a touch over £17,000. The average in the UK is £33,000. And in London, it soars even higher, just under £60,000. While in Blenheim Gwent, 36% of the working age population are on welfare. Jobs, jobs, jobs. People here are trying to stitch together a better future. An elite, a social enterprise, is trying to help them skill up and earn more. There's not a lot of options around here, I don't think. When I left school, it was quite easy. But it isn't so easy now to be able to get the jobs and get the training and get the opportunity. And the transport links make it all the more difficult in the valleys. You live 10 miles away, it takes you an hour to get to work. One, are people actually going to come to work? Because two hours of your day, basically. And they say, we're going to do this investment and that investment, but that investment never materialises. So we've got high levels of deprivation, we've got job losses in the area and so on. I, I'm hoping that our work will help regenerate manufacturing. I'd like to see less people who are economically inactive. Everyone agrees we need a new design for how the economy works. But nobody wants to make big changes to spending with an election looming. And without those changes, how can there be a big shift in the outlook for the British economy?